the official night of the Flying Saucers. The Night of the Flying Saucers, sometimes referred to as the official night of the UFOs, refers to the night of May 19, 1986, when unidentified flying objects were recorded in Brazilian airspace. The objects from Goiás and known objects, Rio de Janeiro were not identified at once, which happened in Brazil the event took place on the night of May 18, 1986, and lasted until the early hours of the 19th. About 20 UFOs were detected by the radars of the Integrated Center for Air Defense and Air Traffic Control, Sindacti, based in Brasilia. The first reports of sightings began at 6.30 p.m., with observations made by the 2SQSS BCT Sergio Mota da Silva, 1957, operator at the control tower at São José dos Campos Airport, TWRSJ, in São Paulo. He reported to the patrol observing a light over the northwest sector of the aerodrome. There's something here in the northwest sector of São José. A little lighthouse, man, but. I'm looking right, the animal is stationary, it doesn't go up or down, it doesn't go left or right, it's just standing there. No, I'm looking, it's not a star. It's a lighthouse. You can't. You can't distinguish anything. It's just a sliver of light. Weirdo. It's high. Now, it's gone into the mist. The emergence of new and dynamic UFOs led the head of the Air Defense Operations Center, CODA, Maj A. V. Ne Antonis Verkera, 1949 2014, to order two intercept operations by F 5E Tiger II and Dassault Mirage fighter jets. Three, one departing from Santa Cruz Air Base. BASC, in Rio de Janeiro, and another from Annapolis Air Base, Bahn, in Goiás. In all, five fighter jets were sent, two Basque F-5ES and three Mirage Bahn's F-103. Interception Attempts Kleber called this Marinhos flight over the sea. The first fighter, an F-5E, prefix FAB-4848, took off from BASC at 10.34 p.m., piloted by 1st Lieutenant A.V. Kleber Caldas Marinho, 1960. In radio communications, the aircraft was codenamed Jambok 17, JB-17. The pilot took off with the radar off and the navigation lights off, being instructed to keep it that way. At a constant speed of Mach 0.7, 864.36 km per hour, he was guided by a flight controller from Ciap M1 to São José dos Campos, where there were ecorators. In less than 10 minutes, Marino made eye contact with a glistening and mostly white UFO that sometimes changed color to red and green. The soldier turned on the plane's navigation lights and increased speed to Mach 0 0.95, 1173.06 1173 per hour. However, the shortest distance it managed to stay from the object was 10 nautical miles, 18.52 kilometers, and that was only for a brief moment. Thirty minutes into the chase, advancing more and more over the Atlantic Ocean, Marinho communicated to the air defense his perceptions of the target, I'm informing you that, apparently, it shouldn't be an aircraft, what? Or a plane, because of its performance in terms of speed, what, and also because of the place it's flying, what? Soon after, the target quickly distanced itself, out of range of the onboard radar of the F-5, limited to 20 miles, 37.04 kilometers, and escaped towards Africa. Armindo, Souza, Viriato de Freitas and the hypersonic UFOs. The second fighter, a Mirage F-103 with the prefix FAB-4913 and codename Jaguar-116, JG-116, took off from Baan at 10.48 p.m., piloted by Air Captain Armindo Souza Viriato de Freitas, 1956. After the appropriate transfers of control, the aircraft was vectored to a point detected by the APAN radar, which transmitted the information to CIOP M1 and the latter retransmitted it to the pilot. This procedure was adopted due to the fact that no echo radar was being visualized in the CIOP M1 equipment. The pilot, after flying seven minutes at subsonic speed, was informed of the detection of a plot 13 nautical miles, 24.07 kilometers, ahead. The plane's radar also spotted the target. 
Viriato de Freitas turned off the navigation lights and attempted the approach, managing to stay, at 18 minutes into the flight, just one nautical mile, 1.85 kilometers, from the target, when the point inexplicably disappeared from the onboard radar screen. Oriented, Freitas performed a 360-degree sweep of the region, and a new plot appeared on the radar 12.5 miles 23.15 kilometers) away. Accelerating to Mach 0.9, 1111.32 km per hour, the aviator managed to reduce the distance to 10 miles 18.52 km for a moment, the separation between the fighter and the UFO increased again, but it soon decreased to 5 nautical miles, 9.26 kilometers, when the object accelerated sharply and increased, in seconds, the distance to 21 nautical miles, 38.89 kilometers. KM, thus staying out of the interceptor's radar range. The captain even repeated the feat of staying just one nautical mile, 1.85 kilometers, from another UFO, after accelerating and reaching the supersonic speed of Mach 1.05, 1,296.54 km per hour, but the object also accelerated and quickly disappeared. Despite the closeness obtained, the hunter saw nothing with the naked eye. Toward the end of the flight, frustrated, Freitas asked the controller, the other hunters were having the same contacts, under the same circumstances, which was confirmed by the interlocutor, affirmative. The same conditions, there is a contact, it comes close to the contact and it increases the distance. Marcio Brasala Giordeo and the interference in the radar. The third fighter, an F-5E with FAB-4849 prefix and codename Jambok 07, JB-07, took off from BASC at 10.50 p.m., piloted by Air Captain Marcio Brasala Giordeo, 1957. In radio communications, the flight controller identified himself as Lynx 45 and sent Brasala Jordan to investigate a series of plots recorded on the radar. With less than 10 minutes of vectoring, numerous immobile traffic appeared at the tail of the aircraft, which was commanded a 180 degrees turn to the right, but no visual contact or onboard radar was obtained. The searches were carried out initially in Santa Cruz and then in São José dos Campos, without anything unusual being observed by the pilot, despite the clear, cloudless night and a full moon. The detections were intermittent and simply disappeared as the fighter approached the indicated location. After half an hour of flight, the captain noticed a red light in the distance, at a lower altitude and close to São José dos Campos. The controller has confirmed detection. Jordan tried to get close, but the plot disappeared from the ground radar, and the light went out moments later. Almost immediately, he saw two other lights, one steady and one flashing, white in color, but he concluded that the lights were coming from a ground station equipped with some tall antenna equipped with two anti-collision lamps. The Smart UFO The fourth fighter, a Mirage F-103 codenamed Jaguar 98, took off from Baon at 11.17 p.m., piloted by Air Captain Rodolfo de Silva Souza, 1954. Souza was guided by a CIOP M1 controller to the estimated positions of the target and several times came close to or even past the plot indicated by the APAN radar. Interestingly, the double contact of the fighter and the UFO was observed only by APAN, never by CIOP M1. After some failed attempts at interception, Without ever obtaining visual contact or by the onboard radar, the aviator commented to the controller, Surely, if it's a real target, it's not lit up, okay? It's, it's dark, because. I'm practically visual with the ground. The UFO demonstrated to maneuver intelligently, avoiding the fighter. At one point, the controller noticed the evasion pattern adopted and informed the hunter, Hey boy, the plot is always at your 6 o'clock, okay? When you turn, it's always turning in front of you, it comes at you, passes in your vertical above or below, we can't detect altitude, and stays on your tail all the time. When you turn, it disappears from the position and always appears in front of you. Aware of this, Sousa turned off the plane's navigation lights, even so, a new interception attempt was not successful. The hunter received instructions for the return. 
After the landing, which took place at 007 a.m., Rodolfo da Silva Souza asked the runway mechanics if they if they had seen or heard anything other than an F-103 flying over the Annapolis base or the surroundings. The answer was negative. From takeoff to landing, the flight lasted 50 minutes, from 11.17 p.m. on May 19 to 12.07 a.m. on May 20. The attempts of Julio Cesar Rosenberg. The fifth and final fighter, a Mirage F-103, took off from Bonn at 11.36 p.m., piloted by Air Captain Julio Cesar Rosenberg, 1954. Three times, Rosenberg was deployed to intercept a target that was evolving in the vicinity of Bonn. It came within one nautical mile, 1.85 kilometers, of the UFO, without ever obtaining radar or visual contact. The flight lasted a total of 54 minutes, from 11.36 p.m. on May 19, 1986 to 12.30 a.m. the following day. Press Conference On May 23, 1986, the then Minister of Aeronautics, Light, official night of the UFOs. This video is just a summary, and of course many things were left out. Don't forget to like and share the video. Subscribe to my channel and see you next time.